Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I wanted to share a fun personal fact about me, and that's I love military vehicles. That wasn't really that fun. It was just more personal, but my favorite military vehicles of all time are as follows. The SR-71 Blackbird, the CH-47 Chinook, the F-22 Raptor, the B-2 Spirit, the Oshkosh M-1070, the Hemet M-977, and the Humvee M-998, and I can go on and on if I throw the tanks in too, but I'll be here forever. And whenever I see a homeless veteran, or one suffering from massive debt or PTSD and feeling neglected by the country they fought for, I think to myself, how much is the B2 Spirit again? Now, I love my Sherp, even though it's not really military, but it looks military, and I have the Lockheed Martin clothing. I just love military stuff, and I love my Humvee. Matter of fact, I sold my old Humvee, and of all the cars I sold so far, I actually missed that one the most, so I decided to buy another one, because I don't think I've given the government enough money. My tax dollars paid for the truck for the government to use, and when the government sells them back to me, I am also taxed again on the purchase, and I also have to pay yearly excise tax to own one in my home state, and when I go to sell it, it's also taxable income. Isn't life great? Now, the only car I have to tow things with is the Rivian, and the Duramax has been in the works for about three years now because I decided to put basketball-sized turbos and blow it up. But this is my first time actually doing long-haul towing with the Rivian, and not only my long-haul towing, but I'm also towing in severe temperatures. It's below 20 a lot of the times at night, and at the moment, and as you know, EVs don't like cold. And the second thing EVs don't like is towing. So we're going to do a double whammy today just to see how bad this can get. I'll be bringing my unassembled jet boat with me, which pays about 800 pounds to get welded. And then on the way back, I'll be bringing back about 5,500 pounds worth of load. Combine that with the 2,500 pound trailer. I'm looking right at 7,000 to 8,000 pounds on the way back in the freezing cold. And with this towing weight, pretty much I'm within a few thousand pounds of the Rivian's max towing capacity of 11,000 pounds. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Rivian has additional competition. The Cybertruck has been released. The Cybertruck's officially out, and I've been seeing a couple driving around, and there's one at my local Tesla showroom, and you can see people lining up to take pictures of it and all that, but it's out. And I don't have one, but I've been reading the specs on it, and they're pretty impressive, but are they enough for me to sell my Rivian and give them to the Tesla overlords? What we're gonna see after this trip is an electric pickup truck with no widespread, reliable, easy to use charging network worth getting. Can you survive while towing without Tesla's charging network and having to rely strictly on EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint, and others? Can it be done without you wanting to rip your hair out? Now remember, I'm used to towing with V8s, gassers, V8 diesels, Duramaxes and Cummins and Power Strokes. I've towed with it all, and I've already towed with the Rivian, but on a much smaller scale. So the first thing you want to do when pulling this weight is some trailer maintenance. We want to make sure the axle and hubs are greased and the lug nuts are tight, and you also want to make sure the winch works, and of course, this wire is frayed. This is a gentle reminder to always cover your winches in the wintertime so water doesn't destroy the ground wire at the bottom of the winch. I tried to cut it back, and it turns out the whole wire is bad, so I'm going to replace that with new wire. Now that the jet boat's all loaded up, I'm gonna head home and charge. But here's the big issue. It's freezing cold out, and I normally get about 25 miles an hour of charging, so it's fully charged overnight, but because it was so cold outside, I'm getting half that. I was getting 11 miles per hour all night. So here we are the next morning, and I thought the truck would be done by now, so I can drive my son to school, so it looks like we're taking the Porsche today which makes things easy. But you know what's easier than taking the Porsche? Making a website with Squarespace. It's so easy to claim a domain or URL like www. An electric pickup truck always seems like a good idea until you need to use it like a truck.com or you can start your own charity like www.kids that don't get dropped off the school at Porsches.com. Then you can create a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your web page look better than the way people look at you when you tell them you're towing with an electric pickup truck. Head to www www.squarespace.com slash richrebills to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions, no matter how crazy it may sound. And speaking of crazy, did you guys see this video of the Cybertruck 
beating the Porsche. And I'm sure you did. And if you take things for face value, then I'm sure you were impressed by it. But if you know about cars and drag racing, you'll scratch your chin just a little bit. Now, we know that EVs make tons of torque, but the whole video just seemed really, really odd. The first thing you have to ask yourself is who is doing the test? Is the company who benefits the most from the outcome doing the test? Yes. Is the company who's performing the test the sole controller of the outcome? Yes. Is there any room for bias? Yes. Let's get into the genesis of this real quick. Jason Camisa did the first towing test with the Tesla Model X racing an Alfa Romero 12C. Many years later, Tesla took the same concept and made their Cybertruck video. Now, why would they use a Porsche? It's easy. It's a well-known brand, and people that don't know cars very well think because it's two doors and it has Porsche on it, it's got to be really fast, right? Well, not really, but we'll get to that later. The second reason why is that Bill Gates said out loud that he commends Tesla for doing a great job with EV adoption, but he ended up getting a Porsche Taycan. It's a premium price car, but it's very, very cool. It's my first electric car and I'm enjoying it a lot. You know, I just got a, a Porsche uh, Taycan, which is an electric car. Okay. And I have to say, I mean, it's a premium price car, but yeah. <laughs> it is very, very cool. Okay. Uh, Elon Musk responded to Bill Gates' purchase by saying, my conversations with Bill Gates have been very underwhelming, to be honest. So Elon Musk took it very well, apparently. I think that's one of the reasons why they decided to use a Porsche to kind of knock Porsche off its peg just a little bit and a slight dig to Bill Gates. Now, here's the thing. Why didn't they use an actual Taycan that the Cybertruck could have pulled and race another Taycan? I think we all know the end result of that race would have been a lot different than this one. They knew it would win, and the Taycan would be a bit much to pull with the Cybertruck to even have a chance at winning. Tesla knew this. You know what else Tesla knows? Tesla knows that most of you don't know anything about cars and drag racing and will watch this video and you wouldn't realize that this is an eighth mile and not a quarter mile, giving the EV obviously the competitive advantage in a shorter distance due to having far more torque off the line. Tesla knows that. Tesla also knows they picked the base model 380 horsepower Porsche 911 to give the Cybertruck the power advantage. Tesla also knows they picked a manual transmission 911 to once again give the Cybertruck the advantage because the person has to shift and they cannot shift as fast as the PDK automatic. Do you think the person in the car who I'm assuming is a Tesla employee because this is a private event and Tesla doesn't invite anyone from the outside in is really going to outshine and outshift the Cybertruck by shifting faster than it? Tesla, who also kindly put how fast the Cybertruck is in the quarter mile, conveniently didn't this time, this race, because you'd be able to see how they really didn't run the Porsche to its full potential or how they had their funky cinematic track over the shift points at the Porsche so you can't tell how fast they were shifting. Fine, whatever. The main point is this. I think it was a great publicity stunt because it had people talking about it, but the car was sandbag. And here's the challenge I propose. I will take my eight-year-old Porsche, my stock Porsche, which is eight years older than the one in the video, and you could put the same generation Porsche at the back of your Cybertruck, and we will race to a timed quarter mile. If I win, which I would never win because the Cybertruck is just so fast, then my point is made. If I lose, you get $20,000, no question asked. Beat my Porsche in your Cybertruck while pulling another Porsche. You, you will recreate this video. If the outcome is the same, you get $20,000. Easy as that. Actually, you know what? Make it $30,000. So I got off to a late start this morning because I had to wait for the truck to charge more. So it threw me off by about two hours. And the goal is to charge at home as much as humanly possible because on the road charging is a lot more expensive. So before I hit the road, I'm going to turn the heated seats on and preheat the car. So I'm using the house's electricity and not the battery. Now I'm driving about 82 miles to the Thompson, Connecticut and I'm averaging about 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So with these calculations, I should be getting about 175 miles per charge while towing. And here's the Rivian's telemetry screen to show what the temperature of each motor is along with tire pressure, battery temp, steering angle, elevation. It's a pretty cool towing screen. As the trip goes on further, I'm actually a little bit more efficient where I'm getting 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So I kept driving like this. I'd be getting about 189 miles worth of charge. Okay, so I managed to miss my exit and I had an additional 15 minutes of time. This lady wouldn't let me in uh, to get my exit with the trailer. That's fine. So I kept going 
Uh, the issue is, is that I managed to add more time. I added more time, but I didn't really add that much more mileage. I added about another maybe three or four miles or so because most of this travel has to do with in town and EVs are a little bit more efficient around town as opposed to the, uh, the, the draining highways. The problem I'm running into now is that it's 12.15 is the estimated time I will get there to drop off the said boat. And uh, the worry is, will I have enough time to make it uh, to the two o'clock ferry. If I get there at 12.15, uh, the ferry's an hour away. That puts me there at 1.15, but also I might need to charge. So that actually poses a new issue, but uh, we'll see what happens. Now I'm at Brian's house and unfortunately he doesn't have a forklift to get the heavy boat off. So we're gonna do things the old fashioned way. Tie a strap to a strong tree and let the tree do all the work. All right, ready? Sure, let's do this. That's a lot easier, isn't it? Oh, wow, that's moving way easier. And down it goes. Well, that's one way to offload a pallet, Rich. And afterwards, he also showed me his wood-burning stove, which I admit is actually kind of cool for a shop. Okay, so now here's the main issue. Now, I've left uh, my buddy's house, and now it says I'm going to be getting to the ferry when I have 21 miles of range left. And this is like a real-world thing. It's not that easy, and it looks like there's no real charging spots uh, headed there. So I'm in dire straits right now. And unless there's charging on the ferry, which uh, charging an EV with a trailer is hard enough as it is, I highly doubt there's gonna be charging on this ferry. So uh, we're gonna see how this trip ends up. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna make it to the ferry successfully, so I'm gonna stop off at this Electrify America. And if you look at this, this Electrify America is one and a half miles off the highway. It's a three mile penalty that you have to take uh, when doing uh, charging off the road. So this isn't exactly ideal. We're gonna see how much I can charge uh, to see whether or not I can make the two o'clock or do I have to push it to three o'clock? Okay, I believe the chargers are here. Uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going so well, it's not looking so good, is it? Never is, it never is. So, uh, it looks like I have to disconnect the trailer because uh, I can't fit in going forward in there. This kind of stinks. If I pull forward, the trailer will be sticking out too far and I don't want to inconvenience people. So, I got to unload the trailer. So, I didn't do anything yet and it's charging the car. So maybe it's free. I didn't put in a credit card information. I guess this is free. Charging is free. So I can have a full charge when I get on the ferry. Now in terms of the ferry, you don't really save much time. All you save is driving fatigue. And the last thing I wanna do is drive through New York City. Though it would be a peaceful, quiet ride and I thought I could work on this video, but I uh, apparently was wrong. <laughs> Then I think to myself, why'd I take this ferry again? I thought I saved time, but honestly, it just saves fatigue and it also saves lightness on your wallet because it costs $175. They charge you per foot, by the way. So if you go in there saying your trail is only 32 feet long total, they measure it and it measures a total of 40, then you will be charged accordingly. A Rivian with a massive trailer just doesn't slip under the radar. Okay, so now I left the ferry with my trailer to start the hour ride to my final destination to see Chris, who is a Navy SEAL, go figure. He also builds H1 Hummers, and we're gonna go check out his inventory of H1s before we pick up my beauty, which he kindly sold me. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. That is insane. 
the new lighting that's in a lot of the cars. Yes. So yeah, yeah. So this is going to get piped with the with that accent. A lot light. of Mercedes have those. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then I'm looking. I might do it underneath. You know, around here, yeah. in the back and stuff. I'm, he didn't I, want know. the uh, the seat, the double seat in the back. No, because it it just you can't really put you put your feet in there. Yeah, you, you had your knees up your here. Your knees are yeah, up there, and yeah, your yeah. feet are actually like sideways, like you're a ballerina. Right. Or something yeah, like <laughs> right. But yeah, we did the. This is all custom. We had a I had to form and make all of these pieces. So like up here, it's going to get made. You can see the right behind you. There's a piece of all fiberglass. Piece of fiberglass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starting yeah. to do that, then that'll get wrapped once I I got to sand it and put the. Uh, so you do all of it yourself. Yeah, a lot of it's my my own and George. This is cool. And then this uh, this bumper, it came uh, it came. It looked great. It thing weighs like I don't know a few hundred pounds. Oh, I yeah, I believe it. This thing's soft. Yeah, it's like a, it's, it's over. It's a like quarter inch steel. Yeah. And what was interesting is that they from the the factory where it came from, it only had these accent pieces. Mm -hmm. So, so we, you had to make these in the center. These I see. So then, and, and you so know, what was up here? Nice. Just flat. It was flat, and it had a couple little holes where you could reach in and do I stuff gotcha. like access I see. holes. But it it just didn't look right. So we we added this. We changed the uh, tail lights into these aluminum tail lights. Uh, the client added this American flag accent just to make everything pop with right. the silver and gray, and then the uh, st everything stainless steel uh, button head. Dude, this thing this looks amazing. Front bumper has uh, didn't have any accent pieces, oh, so, so we you added make this. custom those yourself. And then we also put another plate underneath to stiffen it because the brush guard that's on the ground right now. Yeah. The brush guard when you put the brush guard on, and and it locks in the pins. If you if you wiggle it a little bit, you could see this flex. Flex, I see. So we stiffened it up so you didn't have it, you know, bouncing or anything. Gotcha. And then all the lights and everything. Lights from the rose, man. This is beautiful, man. And then we changed these out. Yeah, this I noticed George's that. George's design here. I noticed that. Very nice job, George. Nice and job. Something with the, the side lights. And this is the client's, you know, I actually like it. So do I. Uh, it has a little, you know, it looks more uh, updated. This is, uh, it lets the people know that you spent the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the money yeah. shot right there. That's the sound. Yeah, lights are on. Turn signals. Oh, yeah. Something's coming on, right? Yep. Yeah, they're on. They're on. Yeah, I know. I think this the wagon is. The wagon. The wagon is what the, I like. I think. I think the wagon's it, man. Because there's, there's a lot more room. Yeah. A lot it's, more room. It, is, it doesn't feel like you're claustrophobic. Yep. This is insane. There's a green wagon to sell. This one is massive. Yeah. Here on the frame, Rich. Oh no. See in the frame right here, you can still see it. He took aluminum foil and covered it and then spray painted it black. And then when he did the video walking around, yeah. Look look at the look at the frame. Oh no. So I gotta take this whole, I gotta do a frame off on this one. So this is so this turned into a project, didn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh, they're all projects when well, you think about it. This one's gonna be mine to drive. Yeah. And now uh, it's been sitting for a year. I will stay in the car, and um, this is how I plan on sleeping in here. So this is the R1T, obviously not the R1S. It was a little bit smaller on the inside, but because of that light shining into the cab, what I'm gonna do, I'll take a blanket, put this over on this side here, to have like a small fort to block the light, turn the seat heaters on, and we're all set. It's morning, getting ready to go pretty soon, and I found a, a nice little adapter here that I could use to charge the Rivian. Let's see how many miles I'm getting. Let's see. Well, 15 miles an hour, definitely not bad. A lot better than last night. I was getting about one mile an hour, so it's gonna be about eight miles of range thus far, and uh, I'm gonna grab breakfast and see what the rest of the day holds for us.
I missed mine. Well, this is mine, so never mind. Yeah, there we go. There you go. It's not even squatting. <laughs> no, All right, there we go. Now we're pulling some real weight. We're pulling 7,000 pounds and it has adjusted itself to 136 miles of range. Thankfully, ferry really isn't that far away, but uh, we're gonna keep things moving uh, to see how much range we actually have when we get there. How ironic is this? Pulling a Humvee with an electric vehicle. Awesome. Okay, so I made it to the ferry and I started with 136 miles of range and I'm at the ferry now and I have 83 miles of range. And uh, 136 minus 83 is 53, uh, but the ferry was 41 miles away from the Humvee so I actually lost 12 miles of range off of the estimate on the way, which actually isn't that bad. I had a couple of pretty big acceleration bursts just for merging, and I wanted to see what it can do. So uh, overall, it's really not that bad. Again, one of the many issues to uh, going to one of these EV charging stations uh, while having something in tow is you gotta do stuff like this. I have to stop here. I have to unload the Humvee. Uh, I was hoping to actually use this spot at the very edge. So there are places available for people to charge their cars at the very edge when you have a trailer. But unfortunately, uh, this guy's in that spot and it looks like he's not even really close uh, to being finished charging. So uh, I got to unhook the trailer, unhook the Humvee, and then plug right in. So I plugged into Electrify America again. And uh, I don't know if they're going to charge me this time. Last time it was pretty cool. I got a free charging session out of it. Uh, let's see what happens this time. Oh, yeah, it's free again. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Electrify America. Here we go. Okay, almost on to the next stop. There's uh, two minutes left until I get to 80%. Uh, I don't want to stay here too long because after 80%, when the charging drastically slows down. After that, I'm going to unplug and then plug the that giant Humvee back in and start heading back. Now, the home is about 133 miles away from here, and normally I'd make this by itself without having to charge, but I think I might have to charge at another stop for about 15 minutes before I make it all the way back. But hopefully the, the uh, Rivian's able to navigate and I can figure out where to go from there. And once again, that was free. Charging, discount, there you go. You love to see it. I'm gonna thread the needle, thread the needle, thread the needle. There we go. All right, if you see what's happening now, the mileage is getting sucked down. When I first started, it had over 44 miles range of left, was the uh, anticipated amount of range I would have when I got to the charging station. Now it's at 25, so uh, I'm going about 60, 65. I might have to drop my speed, but uh, everything's kind of freaking out on me. Uh, now it's saying approximately 78. So it doesn't really know how many miles it has and uh, it's 34 degrees out. So the temperature is slowly dropping. But uh, yeah, that's just 25. So I think I'm gonna start slowing down a little bit because I still have about uh, 40 minutes left of driving. And the last thing I wanna do is uh, roll into this place where um, uh, I have to charge. And if their chargers don't work there, then uh, that's it, it's game over. All right, just checking on the temperatures and uh, the battery that's the warmest I've ever seen it. It was at 90 degrees for a while. Now it's at 105, but it's holding steady at 105. And mind you, I am pulling a very, very heavy uh, Humvee behind me, but uh, the motor temperatures are all in spec. This thing really isn't breaking that much of a sweat. Uh, it's doing a great job thus far. So uh, I gotta head to Rivian, give them a lot of props for this. So hopefully the, uh, the Cybertruck's uh, menu infotainment system will have something similar to this. And if it does, it definitely borrowed a page from Rivian's book because Tesla never really had any, any towing options before. So uh, thank you, Rivian, for doing this. All right, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but uh, I charged to about 92% and it did cost me a small fortune. 
$63. Not really thrilled about that, but whatever. 10 minutes left, idle fees, 63 bucks. Please unplug. Gee, thanks. So, uh, so I'm gonna. Go. So who's gonna start it? Me or you? Uh, I'll do three, two, one. Three, two, one. We'll go. Jenning down a hill uh, coming into the office park, but look, motor temperatures are just dropping. It's doing a great job cooling. And it's in sport mode. So this is, I gotta hand it to Rivian. They're doing an awesome job. It's dropping 10 degrees as we speak right now. Before it was like 220 something. Now it's 210, 212, 188. Uh, the truck's doing its job. Dude, it's doing, it's like, no big deal. <laughs> it's cool. All right, let's unload this turd. Nice job, yeah. This thing's fun. It's fun, right? Yeah, it's a good This is the best summer truck so ever, Joey. All right, guys, it successfully made it back home. The Humvee is here. There's a couple of imperfections I think I could fix pretty easily. That's just uh, fiberglass work right there and also right here. But other than that, this is actually a very, very clean example of a Humvee. There's no rust in the frame anywhere, as you can see. No rust there. The interior is clean. It's kind of beat up, and it looks like someone may have painted this before because normally it has the car paint on it, which is a little bit more textured, as you can see right here. Looks like someone tried to paint this. They didn't do a very good job. Looks like they taped it off a little bit and there's a, there's a tape line right there. Better than that, if you look at this, that frame is clean. You really wanna look out for rust on these and this is actually a really, really, really clean Humvee. Reminds me of my old one. So yeah, this is a really good example. The plans for this is at minimum to do uh, the hard top. The hard top is something I really wanna do for this. Uh, I wanna do the, uh, the C-pillar back window as well. Uh, and also upgrade the seats on the inside. Not really sure to do about the motor yet. It might stay stock for now, but I just love these things so much. If you've ever owned one before, you'll know just how cool these things really are. And there's a couple of things on the truck I actually don't need. Uh, I have these uh, rings for the headlight buckets. I have the uh, antenna mount, and I have the mini snorkel for the air filter, and I'm gonna ship these things out using my favorite app. You know what this is already? ship station it's the fastest easiest and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders in just a few clicks you're managing orders like a professional you're printing out discounted shipping labels and getting your products out fast using ship station and it works with all the major carriers uh usps uh fedex uh even international you compare and choose the best shipping solution every single time and they offer big discounts on shipping costs and you can access the same postage and discounts that are usually reserved for large fortune 500 companies. And right now you guys can use ShipStation free for 60 days when you use offer code RichRebuilds for selling whatever it is you sell on whatever website it is. Use it now or after you watch this entire episode. And like I like to say, make ship happen. And I totally made that up. I don't care what anyone else says.
Okay, boys and girls, here's the final verdict on the Rivian when it comes to towing. I will say it did a fantastic job during the tow test. All things considered, remember, this is an EV. This is not a diesel. It's not a Duramax. It's not a Power Stroke. It's not a Cummins. It's not even a Gas or V8. It did an absolutely fantastic job of towing. What you have to do when you have one of these trucks, you have to set your expectations to a certain level and you have to know what this is. In terms of towing, it has more than enough power to tow. It feels very similar to a diesel, if not more torque uh, getting off the line. This thing could outrun a lot of cars while you're towing with it. It also does a really good job doing the range estimate as well. There really shouldn't be many surprises in terms of, you know, how much range you're gonna have when you get to the next stop. It does a really, really, really good job with that. One of the downsides to towing, obviously, is that if there's no charging places in sight, it puts you in a very, very, very tough position. Now, in terms of this versus the Cybertruck, is this worth it? If you have a Rivian R1T already, is it worth it selling your R1T and getting the Cybertruck? And I will say, I personally do not think so. I think the Cybertruck has a lot of really great options. It has, you know, steer by wire. It, it's it, it's faster. The technology arguably is, is Tesla tech. Uh, I just can't stand the way it looks. I believe it's very akin to the Emperor's new clothes. They're telling you you should like it and they're telling you it looks good. I think it looks really futuristic, but I think it's really a bit much for what I need. I need a nice, calm daily driver that I could slip in and out of traffic. I don't have to look like I'm part of some cyberpunk steam show. Uh, and if you wanna be a part of that, I think that's great for you. Personally, not for me. Number two, the second reason is that I don't really feel like taking the massive depreciation hit. If your goal is to be sustainable, if your goal is to is, is, is to be green, which that's not really my goal either way, it doesn't really make any sense getting rid of a car after 25,000 miles, which I've had this thing for 25,000 miles already. It doesn't make any sense selling that just to get the latest and greatest thing just because you feel like it just because hey look it's new cool and shiny i'm gonna get that that's the consumerism trap they want you to fall into and it doesn't make any sense if i were to sell this to get the cyber truck for me it would be more of a lateral move i would lose money on this truck the more you drive an ev uh the more money it saves you and it just really doesn't make any sense switching it over sure you get better acceleration uh you get new tech uh, but for me, it just really doesn't make any sense. And I think for a lot of people, it might not make much sense either, unless you really, really, really want a Cybertruck. Will you actually use all of those features? You know, do you, do you, do you want more interior volume? You know, do you want more, more geeky and techy things going on in the bed? If you already have one of these trucks, I really don't think it makes much sense getting a Cybertruck. Obviously, it's completely up to you. All of those fancy dancy features, maybe you'll use. Uh, maybe as you're towing, you have better access to the supercharger network, but also keep in mind the newer Rivians, the R1Ts, are gonna switch over to the uh, Tesla infrastructure when it comes to charging. So in my humble opinion, I am very happy with the R1T. You guys could enjoy your cyber trucks in very good health, and I wish you guys the best, but that's my verdict on it. Ooh, you're probably wondering, what was the zero to 60 time of the Rivian while pulling the Humvee? You know what? I'm going to take the Tesla stance on things. I guess we'll never know.